I'm not at home, as you can see today, from the um, change of surroundings. I'm actually in Toronto at the uh, A11Y PO conference, um, thanks to our previous guest, Julian Oscar. Uh, but today, we're very pleased to welcome Adrian Bologno, who is the uh, the, the lead uh, for development at Zilhaven. So, welcome, Adrian. Uh, it's great to have you with us. Can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing at Bilhaven and, and how you came to be working in the field around accessibility? Well, thank you for, uh, for having me uh, to, to begin with. Um, well, I'm the team lead of the web team of uh, Bilhaven and I'm a front end engineer. So uh, what we do here is to develop the uh, website and maintain it and update it. So, um, we are renewing now uh, with a new fresh look and a new technology. So that's why for us it's very important to put accessibility from the very beginning and to include it as a part of the development process and not as a post process. Uh, that unfortunately sometimes we 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 have this mistake to 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 do it an after process and not during development. Sorry, it's just unmuting there. I was, um, so yeah, we've all been in that place where you uh, you retrofit accessibility, and as, as the developers, you, you, you must have felt that pain. So it's uh, it, it's good to see you uh, putting this into your life cycle at the right point now. So um, tell us a bit about Bill Harbin. Um, it, you're based in Austria, right? And so this is a um, uh, of a uh, transactional website, um, you're doing uh, selling products and services, is that right? Or um, we, we are a marketplace, yeah. so what we, we provide is the platform uh, here to here and sometimes some kind of um, soaps as well and car dealers and to advise or not advice but put the advertisement of their products in the platform. We have four verticals which is real estate, um, cars and motorbikes, jobs and marketplace, so the generic one. So if you want to sell for example a chair or your sofa, you could potentially uh, do it in our platform. Um, so since we have our products are others people's product, we take care about the images that they could, the description of the images. Um, so that's uh, how how accessibility came into into uh, into the game of development the platform. Um, uh, in I don't have the numbers in Austria, but around last year. Uh, more than one billion people is impaired, but not last year, but we are more than 7.8 or 7.6 billion people in the world, and more than one billion people are visually impaired. And in our case, we take care only uh, visually impaired because we are not a hardware company. We cannot um, um, work with um, hardware, so uh, special keyboards and everything. Um, so for us, it's very important that we cover the whole audience of Austria and not only the, the audience that can see. Uh, so uh, what we want is to arrive to every possible person that, that wants to use our website. Absolutely, it's a, it's a big market and uh, you don't want to lose 20% of your market rate by just making it tougher and it Curious to know how you're handling the sort of accessibility of other people's data. Uh, I, you said that you're fixing image descriptions and stuff like that. Are you, as a team, doing this, or is this something that you are making available for your your users that are posting adverts to be able to do correctly? How how are you implementing this? Because if you're doing it yourselves, that's a a, a lot of work. No, no, no. Uh, I mean, we have more than uh, more than five, six million advert uh, ads in our platform, so that will be a, a, a as as they call thank you work. But um, we give the opportunity for every vertical, every possible vertical uh, that we that we have. So it doesn't matter if it is a sofa or if it is a 
apartment or if it is a car to provide a description of every single uh, image and we will attach this as as uh, maybe some people can can guess in the alt image of uh, in the alt prop of the image um, so if we don't have the description because the user is totally optional of course so the the user can don't provide any description what we do is to give a bit more context of the image so we said image one out of 15 so at least you have a context of how many pictures you have and the title of the ad because it would be a not clever uh, solution to put 12 images with the same alt description um, so we try to give a bit more context when we when we do this uh, we've been reading and exploring some in artificial intelligent uh, libraries and engines to identify um, normally objects or car parts so if you know if you are in the front or in the back or if it's a sofa or chair or clothing we are not confident enough that these can cover 100% of the cases so we prefer to stick with the optional field for the user Antonio you must be muted yeah Antonio you're muted Okay. So, can't hear so, Antonio. Antonio, so Deborah, do you want to cut in? Well, um, I, I was curious, is, is it because I, I know is, it is possible and you might have, um, your users would not like it, but ha, have you ever thought about making it mandatory so they do have to um, add alt text? I understand you. it would be difficult to police them. Um, uh, can, can you hear me? You yeah, yeah, definitely. Me, I, I, um, yeah, I just, I just want no, to make just, sure, but I, I'm just I'm yeah, I was just numbers. curious if you've, you, you still would be, you know, like you said, you know, sometimes you have image one of 15. Um, so if you're alt tagging it, image one, image two, you know, it's not meaningful, but I'm just curious if you have, if y'all have considered making it mandatory and that the, um, the, the person has to add the alt tags. We, or, did, or we, least... did, um, okay. we did think about it. The, uh, the conclusion that we end up about making it mandatory, a bit of research and a bit of um, um, brainstorming was that it could be easier, it could be easy for the, for the user to just copy and paste the same description for every image. What is not exactly what we want uh but yeah you, you you cannot obviously i mean if you leave it the possibility to the side of the user then the user has the power of that um so yeah it's a balance of uh giving the perfect description of the image by the user or giving at least some context of the image i know it's not the description of what the image reflects but I think is the best thing that we could possibly do without any information. Right, and and as you're saying, maybe um, artificial intelligence can help in the future because A absolutely. Uh, we know that it's being used that way. Yeah, I mean, it's still an early phase of yeah. any uh, artificial intelligence, not only in uh, right. image processing, but yep. uh, in, in, in super engines and super computers but is definitely a possibility that we should explore in the future. Yeah, I've heard people talking about using narrow artificial intelligence to help with um, adding alt tags and you know coming up with a library of objects and stuff that we can use. So I, I know there's multiple projects going around, around the world. I, I've heard multiple ones recently, so there's hope. Um, Antonio, I know you're having problems with your mic. Do you wanna go again? Yeah. So uh, how does your system uh, how does your system flags those images uh, who don't have a description? Um, we at the, at the beginning we had a a library which um, which visually again not for visually impaired people but visually when you don't when we didn't have a description you didn't have a, the the written description now 
Um, we were again evaluating because we did a lot of A-B testing if to uh, definitely hide the image uh, for the user with ARIA hidden, for example, if it's not relevant or we could not provide any relevance for the user. So if we could, uh, if we potentially have an ad, an ad that has images and no image has any description, then I agree with you, Deborah, that image out, one out of 15 makes absolutely no sense. There is 15 images, but I don't know what the images are. are um, I don't know what the images are reflecting. So it could be a car, but I don't know if you put 15 images of the front or one or 15 from the side. So uh, we we could possibly, and there's a, is a valid alternative to, to hide them if they are only, um, um, how to say, decorative in this case, only in this case. Antonio, did you want to follow up? No, no. Okay. Well, it, and Neil, I don't know if you wanted to make a comment. Um, well, I, I think it's great that you're, you, you're putting stuff in the, in the workflow because uh, the earlier in the workflow it, it is, it, uh, the more likely people are to do this stuff. So mm -hmm. that, 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 that's, that's great. Um, um, are, are users also pasting videos? Uh, no, so we don't. Uh, do you, do you don't we have don't videos. have videos. No, we don't have videos. Yeah. Okay. So, because uh, I because I know that that's something that we you know, sell some stuff online, um, and and, and um, we do quite a bit of uh, videos, and obviously um, you can add captions. Uh, I, I noticed that. Um, that uh, link, you know, with LinkedIn, now you can add captions, and they've also started um, doing automated image description. So I think, like you were saying, that um, you know, there's potential to use some of this technology that's coming along to to remove some of the burden on the the individual content creators. But at the same time, uh, I know there was a talk yesterday at the conference that I met today where they're saying just quite how long a way it's got to go to to really convey accurate information. You know, the, the quality of the information that you're getting from automated descriptions is significantly less than a well-crafted human one at, at, at this stage. Um, I think when we're looking at what um, you know, Microsoft are doing, for example, at least they are uh, if you're using the automated descriptions in something like PowerPoint, um, they are saying, you know, what the percentage likelihood of uh, accuracy is, you know, it's predicted with a, a reasonable confidence or, or less confidence that, uh, that it might be this or it might be that. And I think that that at least gives you some kind of idea about the, the, sort of the level of accuracy. That said, five years ago, this wasn't possible at all. So. Yeah, things are moving really, really quickly. Where do you see the next uh, areas of improvement of accessibility in your platform, um, specifically, and in online commerce more generally? Uh, for us, uh, and, and, and any other platform that I've been um, researching, uh, um, what I find what I found very difficult to to do, and I'm now more into the technical part, is drop downs. Um, so, uh, and as well payment. So we are talking about very sensible data, which is credit cards, SEPA um, transfers, or anything like that. So we need to um, these forms that that allows you to introduce your uh, your payment data uh, that has very complicated um, controls like like drop downs to select uh, I don't know whatever payment methods and everything. I found it very r tricky to 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 tag to uh, to identify if I want to be shown if I want to be read. Uh, I'm talking again people with 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 um, screen readers um, uh, and the context for me, uh, what you were saying about like the accuracy of the information and the context of the forms, how to how to clearly state where you are, 
the, the page that you are. Uh, so a quick example, if you have an input with the label name, name means nothing. You need to give it a bit of a context. So that's what I find very difficult. And for us is something that we are investing time on defining this context, uh, these relationships between forms and where you are, if you're in the login, if you're registration, if you're in, in the payment form. If you are in, introducing the data of an advertisement and uh, in the case of a car, it has like like 50 fields or like 200 fields. Uh, so you need to give a bit of more, of more context. Um, mm, yeah. I, I, I don't. I don't know where, where the 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 future can go um, for for people who's using screen readers. Again, maybe maybe yeah, give him more context. I, I would say that for now, or at least this is what we're focusing on. <clears throat> Sorry, I, I know. Well, everybody will go on mute. But um, <clears throat> as we're in our noisy environments, Neil, <laughs> uh, but he's at the, the, you know, it's going to be an amazing um, co accessibility conference in Toronto. So I'm glad he's there wow. representing everybody. Yes. Um, but yeah. I was curious what your uh, community, uh, you know, how is your community responding to you making this portal and platform um, accessible to all? Are y'all advertising it? Are you telling people that you're making these efforts? Because we often see these efforts not being made in platforms like yours. So I was just curious um, how you're letting your audience know and talking about what you're doing. Absolutely. Um, let me, again, let me just add something on the top of Deborah and tell us about the demographics of the people on the platform that would relate with Deborah's question as well. Good. Um, so, uh, answering first, Deborah, um, we are in the process of developing the new platform. So, what we are moving is from a legacy code to a completely new platform. That's why um, it's easy and allow us to start from the very beginning with this. And it's not a, a fixing process, but it's a development and create creation process. Uh, which is the beauty of, of, of creating something new. Um, so what we're doing, uh, or what the, uh, the aim, what we're aiming is there is a certification in Austria by the accessibility state. Uh, um, so I, I don't know how to say um, institution, uh, let's say in Austria, where we aim to get uh, not yet there, obviously, because we are in the middle. But what we want is to get this batch certificate of, of being accessible. The other uh, thing that we're doing, and especially me, is I'm talking in a lot of conferences now. As I said, I was in Colombia this, this last week um, in the JSConf Colombia talking about how to test web accessibility. Uh, I did a previous talk. Uh, called How Does Your Website Sound Like, um, which was about developing web accessibility. Now I'm talking about testing web accessibility. So what we're doing is to show how we test what are the tools that we use while we develop, how to test the DOM structure of your HTML, and how we test manually. These, are, these two were automate testing. Um, we need to remember that only 20 to 50% of the issues can be uh, capture automatically or automated, uh, but it's not magic. You need to include this in in a, in a full testing process with manual testing as well. So what we're doing is to um, show the community, not only local in Vienna. I'm going in December to Russia as well to talk about this, uh, to show what are the tools that we use. That they are, the good thing of those tools are one is open source, free and they are not difficult to use. So it's the same as HTML. When we develop HTML, it's just out there for you. It's not, easy, it's not difficult to, to, to use. So we want to give the community the opportunity to know how we work, not, not only to show that we did it, but to show that they can do it as well. Um, and again, not only in Austria, which uh, compared to the world is a very small country, but to, to the whole community out there, Twitter, blog post, 
um, all, all these things. Uh, demographics um, of the use of Willhaven. Um, I don't know if I can tell you about it. Like, I'm, I'm not hundred percent sure if I am in the position to say. Uh, but I don't know if I have the knowledge with me. Um, no, no, I cannot tell you how many people or how many, even how many it's gender or anything like that. The only thing that I am now starting to 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 try. We have a UX team with UX researcher. What I'm trying to do with him, and it's n I'm not 100% sure if I'm gonna get it, but we are trying to contact uh, blind uh, people associations in Austria to try to um, get them to use our product and give us early feedback about it. The same as we do with any feature that we create. The only difference is that accessibility is not a feature. Uh, so it's not an option, it's not a choice. You people don't, don't have the choice. So that's why we do this for them. Um, so we want to, 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 to get uh, people to try our product with early, with early feedback. Uh, maybe I can provide a bit later with demographics. But I'm, I'm sorry, I cannot, I cannot give it to you just now. And that's okay. <laughs> but why did y'all decide to make the, the platform accessible? Of course, we should all be making things accessible. I mean, why would you leave out large numbers of people? And yet, we still see often it's an afterthought and it is not being in, included uh, at the beginning stages like it appears to be with the work that y'all are doing. So I'm just curious um, why you... you I'm always curious why people start doing it. Yeah, um, in my in in my case, I became the the uh, the project leader of this project. Um, so I've been I've been focusing in accessibility for the last three years. Um, I'm getting more and more. So once I had the opportunity to have a new fresh product, I, I that was like the the gate open for me. Like no. That's like, for example, it's the same as any code guideline. For us, we don't accept any pull request that doesn't have any unit test. So for me, I don't accept any pull request that doesn't have, that's, that violate a at least severe and 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 uh, and big issues. So okay, I can live with warnings and moderate. At some at some point, uh, so starting with our corporate image, we our logo is blue and white. Uh, so yeah, that's definitely not not complaining with the double A or triple A, and we are not gonna change our corporate image. That's something that I know, but uh, I would never accept any link with a roll button, or I would never accept any link with any edge ref. I, I deleted two roll buttons today uh, in, a, in a request because that's not the way that we do. And the good thing for me is I see how my team is learning about this. It's a, it's a learning path uh, that that every developer should out there should learn. So and there is millions of resources in the internet, Twitter. I mean, I have the luck. That in Vienna, uh, there is a there is a huge uh, accessibility expert, uh, Manuel Matusovic. Maybe you know him. Uh, he he's been very famous because he's uh, he wrote a couple of articles he gone viral, like how to make the worst accessible website 100% in Lighthouse and all links like this. And we together we are going to found the new accessibility club vienna which we don't have a meetup in vienna yet and it's gonna happen soon soonish um but again yeah there's there's a uh, resources out there that every developer should, should should look at it so that's how it this was born in in the company so uh, what work you do are you doing to, when you are onboarding new people when you hiring when you are getting a new developer to work in your team what type of work are you doing with them to make sure that 
is somehow it doesn't get the code out of track. <laughs> Good. Uh, we have we have uh, some some documentation written with our code guidelines. Not only how we want to structure our code or how do we want to manage forms, but we have as well accessibility guidelines. So we have the tools that we want to use to test uh, to give you a bit more. I mean, we use uh, linters. For ES, so we use the accessibility linter, so you need to install it in your in your code editor. We use React, so we use React X from Deque University to see all the violations in the console, or we use um, uh, Jest to write our own unit test. So that's things that we, from the very beginning, every developer that joins the team needs to know and needs to use. Uh, as well as Chrome extensions that needs to install to manually test. Um, the other thing is is a forever path. Is is I I'm 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 lucky that I live in a world in a, in a, in an industry. I'm a developer and I'm sure that I will never ever stop learning. So there's something that we will all learn day by day, uh, reviewing pull requests from other colleagues and. Yeah, I, I mean, there's not there's not everything can be can be uh, learned in the, in the onboarding phase. It's something that that you need to have a mentor inside the team that goes for you. Excellent. I mean, I, I I love your passion. And one of the things that uh, we just heard about today, and I think is really important, is actually the whole sort of usability of your your website obviously you talked a, a briefly about you know, creating accessible sites that are totally unusable so um and we just had a, a great talk um about um task-based testing so um so this is actually looking at, at actually sort of taking people through various different tasks on on your website you know how am i going to find you know the the car park that I require and how am I going to get from finding that car park to you know putting it in the shopping basket and, and making the payments. So it's it's not you know testing one page at a time, but testing the whole flow to 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 see how it works. Is that something that that you've got teams doing right now? Um, yeah, as I said, as I said, uh, do you mind to mute your? Good. Uh, that's uh, what I said. Is um, we have a UX team uh, which is doing this research. The the for me one one key from our team or from our teams is that our UX team is sitting with us, so the communication flows very very good. Actually, I'm sitting in front of my UX lead, and what we do is to not accept what the UX designer tell you but to work together. Um, so it doesn't really have to come from the UX team to the developers, but the, sometimes the other way around. So not, not, and not everyone, not, not every time um, uh, needs uh, a user. So we don't need a user to test. We, we are the best people to test because we know the, the, the product as well as we are the bad people to test because we know the product. But um, what we do is to test all flows. And I, th th you said a sentence that I normally start with a presentation with about when we I, when I explain accessibility, is that you are in a e-commerce shop and then you call this the support and you say I want to see my latest purchases or I want to change my email and they tell you ah you need to click in the top right corner or you need to click in the end in the icon that look like an engine. Look, for blind people, there's no engine. There's no icon that looks like an engine. There's no top right. So we need to f to find out the flows that um, that determines that a user can find what they're looking. But it doesn't matter what kind of user. So it doesn't matter if you're visually impaired, if you're using a keyboard, if you're using a mouse, if you're using a tablet, or if you're using a phone. Actually, it doesn't matter if you're using a PSP or a console, or a, P a PlayStation you should be able to find the, the whole flow. It needs to be easy enough. And 
not only easy enough, but 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 consistent and 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 current with the with the context of your of your content to be a bit redundant. Um, so what we're doing is a, a lot of research, a lot of A/B testing, inviting a lot of users uh, to test our product and and get this early feedback and treat it as gold for us because this is what is going to determine the final product. I don't know if that answer your question. So, so uh, I, I imagine that just described will be very useful to share with the community and with the meetup and that you are planning to put together. Can you tell us more about that meetup and you, how you are planning to organize yourself uh, within Vienna? Uh, absolutely, yeah. Um, so we are gonna find we're gonna found the uh, Accessibility Club Vienna together with the Accessibility Club. So Accessibility Club was born in Germany uh, by Joshi, and we're very happy with that for that. Um, and the good thing is, out of this Accessibility Club, which, by the way, the Accessibility Club Summit is now in November in Berlin. So everyone, feel free to go because it's going to be a, a, an amazing event. Uh, out of this Accessibility Club, uh, Accessibility Club Turku in Finland was born. So I contact Manuel and I propose the idea to fund this meetup because we didn't have any accessibility club. I we was working together with the UX Vienna meetup, but it was not on, I, my vision of accessibility was not only for UX design or development, uh, maybe someone who designed chairs uh, wants to join us. So it's not about web accessibility, but accessibility. Uh, so we contact uh, accessibility club, they, um, they uh, said that we we could we could join them as a member of the family. We can use the infrastructure, and that's how it's going to be born. Slowly, we need to find places, venues, access that they are accessible. Uh, we want to get a sponsor to uh, uh, caption the videos. Uh, a lot of things like organizing events are difficult. And unfortunately, organizing accessible events are even more difficult. Uh, I, uh, just a few, just a few comments. Um, it, with the um, accessibility come you met, uh, um, accessibility club. Sorry, you mentioned you mentioned um, um, a person's name. Um, that's doing it. So we want to make sure that we uh, tag them. So you'll have to give me that. But it is a good gotcha. idea. And I know that there's other groups and um, uh, I'm going to let Neil talk about that. But I love the passion that you have for accessibility. <laughs> I see when you talk about it, you get because we're all a bunch of accessibility geeks, right? So I, <laughs> yes. the passion you show for it. I can't help, but it touches my heart. So thank you, thank you for that passion. And and it's also interesting to me because Zero Project is in Vienna, and we see so much with some very interesting innovations coming out of Austria. Like you said, it's a small country, and yet you're doing some really really cool things. So I um I just wanted to really applaud the efforts that you're making, and and note that um your passion is the passion that you see with us as well because. You know why do you not want everybody to be included? And so uh, I just wanted to um, give you kudos for that. And I know that Neil has a um, comment to make, but I just wanted to thank you for um, the passion that obviously is coming out. And I like how you're being creative about it and wanting to make sure that others join the conversation. And another point, I love that it's not just a digital conversation; that it is actually everything because build barrier. Built barriers really, really stop our community, just like digital. The digital divide and the digital inclusion is so critical. So I don't often see those two coming together in the same conversation, and I think it's critical that we do it more in the future. So, And I don't know if you wanted to comment on that, and then I'll, I'm going to go on mute and turn it back over to Neil after you comment. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, again, um... I'm uh, very focused in web accessibility because this is what I do. Uh, but um, I have a very good friend of mine who is a product designer and he loves chairs. He loves chairs. Um, so 
we were we were talking about accessibility. How 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 can we even make accessibility uh, chairs a chair accessible, right? Not only for people who's in wheelchair, because obviously that that you need to adapt it to 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 these needs. But not only chair. I mean, a chair you use it to sit down in a table. Okay, let's make the chair that adapts to the table. Like th this this kind of thoughts, the kind of uh, brainstorm that that could could possibly fire up in this conversation. As well, um, um, we want to give the opportunity to other industries to get into meetups. It, it looked like when we when we go to meetup.com, in this case, the, the company that they are organizing or they are giving the platform to organize this, we usually see that the, the majority of meetups are digital, are for developers, are for designers, are for infrastructure engineers let's give the opportunity to other industries as well to why not meet up right that's the word meet up and talk about um their 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 needs their their passion their, their passion as well that's fantastic um and, and we know that there's meetups in London and that our, our supporters are very active oh, yeah. and um, instrumental in, in making sure that they they continue to do good work. Um, I'd like to thank um, both Barclays Access and uh, my clear text and our friends at Microlink yeah, for continuing to support us. And thank you very much, Adrian. It's been a, a, a great pleasure talking with you today. I'm no, sorry about the background noise. No, no problem. No problem. I enjoy enjoy the accessibility Toronto uh, conference because I'm so jealous about it. Um, but uh, me too. No, thank, me too. Thank, I'm totally <laughs> jealous. Why? Thank why? You. I want to be in Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. It's thank you all amazing. for thank you all for for organizing uh, the chats. I've been following you since long time, um, but um but mostly to for for giving awareness of of the of the uh, this world that uh, unfortunately we we we've seen uh, that accessibility is more and more important and not only important um uh, we've seen now new laws new european laws in in our case in here in europe new european laws i'm from spain so i've seen uh, new laws in Spain that I'm very happy about. So you can now claim about websites that they are not accessible. Um, but yeah, thank you, thank you for the for the effort you you put on it. I just want to, if if you allow me, I just want to finish with a sentence that I always finish in my in my talks. And I really loved, I really liked it when I saw it, and I always put it in the in my slide. And you said. It's not just about disabled users being able to access your website. It's about everyone being able to access your website, because you never know when you forget your glasses at home, or when you don't have your mouse with you, or your screen is broken and you need to buy a flight. And if you need, you need the urgent to 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 buy a flight. Uh, so we have smart enough operating systems like macOS, Windows, Linux who has built in screen readers for you. So let's use the tools that the web community, W3C web standards provide us to develop to everyone, not disabled people, everyone. Very good, very good. And, and I can totally attest to that because I spent two days in Spain squinting at my computer because I left my glasses at home. Uh, when I left at five o'clock in the morning to go to a conference. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure talking with you. Thank you.